The purpose of this video is to go back over what we covered in class on Thursday with respect to the naive forecasting model, the moving average forecasting model, and exponential smoothing forecasting model. I will proceed in that exact order and I will post on Blackboard exactly what time in the video each of those begin so if you want to watch just one part you can. So we're going to start with the naive model. The naive model just takes last month's forecast or excuse me it takes last month's demand and that becomes the forecast for this month. So let me show you what I mean. Okay so what you see in front of you is the handout from class the other day and you'll notice that we've got a column of data here which is the actual demand and then we're going to be doing our forecast right here, our naive model right here in this column. All we do is take last period's actual demand and that becomes our forecast for this next period so 12 goes here so f of 2 means we have a forecast for 12 for the second period and then we do the same thing for the second period the actual demand of 17 becomes the forecast for period 3 and for period 3 we have the actual demand of 20 becomes the forecast of 20 for period 4 and so it goes on down the page So as you can see, I've got the values written down here that reflect the naive forecast. Now I'm going to move over here to compute the naive error. So right here is where we would find the naive error. And what we're doing is calculating the absolute difference between the actual and the forecasted amount. So in period 2, we want to take the absolute value of the difference between A2 minus F2 which in this case is 17 minus 12. So it's going to be 5 and we'll put the absolute value signs in there. And then we'll do the same thing again in period 3. We'll have the absolute value of A3 minus F3 which is 20 minus 17 which is equal to 3. We've already done F4 for you, or period 4 for you. Um, and then we'll get down here to period, uh, let's go on to period 6. I will just quickly do um, period 5 here. So I went ahead and did F period 5, but look at period 6. You notice that we're taking A6 minus F6, and that's 21 minus 24, um, but because of the absolute value signs, the number does not become negative, it stays positive. So we end up with 3, because all we're interested here is in the difference between the two, not whether it's positive or negative. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this column out so you have it. And then I'm going to come back on and show you how to compute this number right here, the MAD for the naive model. So when we sum the MAD column, we end up with 42, and that is a sum of these numbers over here, you know, 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 5 plus 3 plus 10, all the way down here to the bottom and that's going to give us 42. Then we're going to divide that number by the number of observations which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so we divide 42 by 9 and we end up with a MAD of 4.667 so that doesn't really tell us anything I'm going to put it actually down here except for that we have a MAD of 4.667 for the naive model we need something to compare this to so we don't know if this is good or bad. We have to compare it to other models. So we're going to move on now to the moving average model and then we'll be able to compare at least the moving average models, um, how good it is, to the naive model. 
Now we're going to move to the moving average model. First thing we notice about the moving average is that I start doing my calculations here in period 4. And that's because these previous periods here, they cannot be used because you need at least 3 months of data in order to compute a 3 month moving average. So we start here in period 4. And you can see in period 4 I've got a1 plus a2 plus a3 divided by 3, which is ostensibly just an average of the first three months. That's all it is. And so we come up with 16.33. We do the same thing in F5. We take a2, a3, a4. So we can just go look here. We got a2. We have a3. We have a4. So we're going to write that out here. 17 plus 20 plus 19 divided by 3 and that's going to give us 18.667 and then in the next period we're going to do the same thing but we're just going to shift it down by 1 so this, these 3, they went to here so now we're going to use these 3 to go to here. So we're going to have A of 3, 4, and 5. So that's going to be 20 plus 19 plus 24 divided by 3. And that's going to give us 21. So you get the idea here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish it out for you, write it out for each period, and then we'll move on to computing the MAD. So here you go. You can see I've calculated the forecast using the moving average model for each of the periods all the way down to F of 10. So you can see all the values there. So if you want to check yours against them, um, there you go. Now let's just go over to the naive model. Um, we're going to, excuse me, now let's just go over to the calculate the MAD for the moving average model. I'm going to do that in pink so that you can just see that which set it's for. So the first thing to keep in mind with the moving average model is that we cannot calculate a MAD for these first three periods. Just like we were not able to calculate a forecast, we of course can't tell how accurate our forecast is either because we don't have anything to compare. So we're going to go right here into period number 5 and we'll take the absolute value of the difference between A5 minus F5 and just keep in mind that F is the forecast at hand and so in this case we're talking about this 18.667 you can see that it is going to be 5.333. That's just the difference between the actual A of 5, 24, and F of 5, which is 18.667. So we'll do the same thing here for period 6. We're going to take the absolute value of A of 6 minus F of 6, which is going to be 21 minus 21, it looks like which of course is going to be 0. And then we do the same thing for period 7, the absolute value of A of 7 minus F of 7, which will be um, 9.667. We have A of 7 minus F of 7, which is 31 minus 21.333, which is almost 10, or 9.667. And we'll finish that out um, down to the bottom, and then we'll sum it all the way down, which should be about 38. When we sum straight down this column, we add up all of these numbers and divide by 7. So in in this case is 7. We'll just put that right there so you can see it. And so we end up then with a MAD for the moving average, I'm going to put MA, is going to equal 5.429. So you 
So between the naive model and the moving average model, we can see that the naive model is actually better because it is closer to zero. So between these two models, the naive model is better because it is closer to zero. So in telling you that, we have answered this question right here, which is, uh, which forecast is better and why? Well, the naive is better, and it's because the MAD is closer to zero. Okay, now we're going to change gears over to exponential smoothing. Now here we're going to do exponential smoothing forecast. It's really very similar to what we've just done. It's just we need a few extra steps. And so what I'm going to do is just go through the steps here. I've blown it up nice and big so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then um, it's a good idea if you try a couple on your own. So it's all about knowing which numbers to pull. So that's why I've taken the time to label all of these. As you can see here, I have them all labeled in a lot of detail. You know, A1, A2, A3, A4, F1, F2, F3, F4. The reason I do that is so that it's easy to know which numbers go where in the equation. So we're going to start here with period 3. And we are interested in F of 3. And F of 3 is always going to be F of the previous period. So that's going to be 2 plus our alpha times the difference between A of 2 minus F of 2. Because we're in period 3, so all of these values here, this one, and this one, and this one, they're all going to be essentially t minus 1, or from the previous period. So now we're going to go ahead and plug in the numbers. And we know that f of 2 is uh, right up there above us, so it's uh, 11.20 plus alpha. And in this case, our alpha has the value of 0.2. We can see it right there. It's also written at the top of your page. 0 0.2 times the difference between a2 minus f2. So a2 is 17 minus f2, which is 11.2. And then we should get, excuse me, 12.36. So you can see I wrote out for the next period here. I've got f of 3, a of 3, and f of 3 again. So then I just fill in the numbers once again. I'm going to take f of 3, which I just calculated to be 12.360, plus alpha, which is uh, 0 0.2. And I like to put a bracket in there just so that it reminds me when I put it in my calculator, order of operations rules do matter. Times a of 3, which is 20, minus f of 3, which is 12.360. And it should equal 13.888. And then we'll just move on to f of 5. And so I've written out f of 5 for you here. You can see I've got um, f of 4 uh, plus alpha times the difference between a of 4, f of 4. And then I've just plugged in the numbers here. And so for f of 5, um, we should get 14.90. 910. And then we go on and do this all the way down. So I'm going to put the values in, and this way you can calculate it on your own and just check and make sure you're doing it correctly. And then we'll move on to calculating the MAD for the exponential smoothing model. So what I have here is the rest of the exponentially smoothed um, forecasts all the way down here. And so you can check your answers against mine. I followed exactly the same format all the way down. Now we're going to just do the forecasting error for the exponentially smooth model. We're going to do it the same way as we've done it before. So let's just take a look at that. Okay, so as I'm looking here at the MAD for the exponentially smooth model, I notice that like these two numbers um, here in this box right here um, where I've got the 5.8 
um, your paper probably says 5.2 and it should say 5.8 and this one over here says 5.8 and it really ought to say 5.2 so let's just get that changed right away here so we're on the right track here now we'll move on down here to this first period where we actually need to calculate something and that is um, going to be the absolute value of the difference between A of 3 and the forecast for period 3. So in this case it's 20 minus 12.360 and you get 7.640. And then in the next period, uh, period 4, we have 19 minus 13.888 and the difference is 5.112 and then you can see I've just filled these in on down so you're welcome to check mine against yours against mine um, some of these absolute value signs maybe could be a little bit more prominent and then um, let me go ahead and fill in the rest and then we'll add them down and then we can make an assertion about models which one's better so when you add up all these values right down this column here, just like we did before, we get this 82.602. And we need to divide that by n, of course. And n is going to be 9 because we've got 9 observations. And so we get this 9.178. So the MAD for this type of model of exponential smoothing, so we're just going to call it the MAD.2, is going to be 9.178. That means that this model is not as responsive as we would like it to be to the changing demand. It's lagging demand pretty drastically. Now you're going to find that when you do this model right here, the second one, where you change the alpha over to 0.8, it's going to be more responsive to changing demand. And you're going to get a lower MAD. Actually you're going to get a MAD of 4.961. I'll just put that down here, uh, 4.961, this is the MAD for the other model, uh, 0.8, 4.961, and of course that's better, and that's because it's going to be more responsive because this alpha is larger. We're going to talk about that a little in class. But I hope this provides a nice review for you and you're able to you know, go through it slowly and make sure you understand it well. Uh, it would be a really great idea to get this uh, done for class on Monday. This column here. So for class, uh, not Monday, I'm sorry, Tuesday. As well, you need to do this. Or at least start it. Okay, so hope this was helpful, and let me know if you have other questions, okay? I'm always looking for feedback. Thanks, bye.